Well, hello everyone. Today's class is going to be from CRM how you can call an external API and pass web requests. So this is kind of when you're planning to like have integrations around and you have to send CRM data out to an external web API. Uh, how will you do that? It can be a web API or it can be a REST API. Expects a certain type of message. You can send that message from CRM plugin itself as long as you have the URL and the right credentials. So why waste time? Uh, let's look at how it is done in the code and then I'll give you a walkthrough of the code as well and that's pretty much straightforward. Okay. Um, so if you remember we were uh, discussing uh, back in time say about a couple months back how to get um, config information. So I'm using that information to read the username, password, and the URL. Okay, uh, so you can refer to the video uh, that we have, which talks about how to use config settings and uh, pass parameters to plugin. So, right jumping into the code, um, you all know this is the execute method on any plugin. So, I just gave it a name, a user URL. Um, so, if that's not empty, I simply going in. Uh, making sure the request is coming from a system user uh, entity, you know, you, any entity that you want to trigger in, in my specific way. When a user has, you know, some change, I'll try to send out a message. So that's what, uh, you know, my, my logic is. Uh, and as you can see, uh, I'm doing this on both create and update. Okay. Um, you can notice that I have a pre and post image comparisons which are commented out. But, um, you know, this gives you an example when you are sending an update, uh, you can always compare to that specific attribute in the system, whether it has actually changed or not, then only trigger your outbound message, right? And on create, uh, you know, you, you can you can directly send the message out. Okay, so if you can look at it, I'm using the, you know, for both of them, the same function, and all it is taking is the context and just the uh, you know service request and just tracing service for you know uh, my internal trace logs that i want to write so if we step into this method okay yeah, all it's doing is just getting a system user record um, and you can see what all attributes i am retrieving here uh, full name email address employee id um, i have it twice here we can remove that later that's no worries so these are the only you know couple data that i'm getting uh, once i get that i'm just checking whether this object exists if not uh, you know i'm calling a method that will generate uh, the outbound message that i'm trying to uh, which in my case i'm trying to generate an xml uh, that's what the variable says right api outbound xml string um, and once this is generated all I'm doing is I'm using this particular method in my helper class where I'm passing what is the message what is the URL what username and password uh, that this URL uses to authenticate okay um, let's first see how I'm constructing uh, the message the XML message if I step into this code it's pretty straightforward it is taking the system user object uh, again ensuring that the system user object is not empty and I'm just using a XML construction um, where I'm sending the full name for now just as a sample but you already saw that the system user object that I'm passing here uh, has more details whatever you want to add you can add to your retrieve collection in the column set up up top and you can have uh, all of these in the in XML that you're constructing okay um, and a couple of the items that you'll notice here is um, I'm forcing explicit XML tasks this is not required unless you know your your customer is expecting to have both XML open and closed nodes um, if you don't know what an XML is I, I would recommend you to you know just check out or let us know we can make a video on that how you can uh, construct XML messages and then differences between various types but by the current XML standards you don't need to force it uh, but this is you know based on one of the requirements I have okay 
uh, and then it just returns me an XML okay uh, so if I go back that's that's my message it is coming in as a string let's see what I'm doing here in this uh, actual method which is posting the message to the URL that I want to send this message to so if I go there that's the method as you can see the parameters again you know it's taking the XML uh, and then it's taking the URL what is the username and password all that we are passing uh, on the plugin execution um, these three items we are retrieving from the config settings and the message we are constructing uh, when the plugin is executing okay so you can see that I'm using the base.net web request method um, so I just created an object web request that the create uh, is taking the URL uh, and then I'm setting the method to post so the web request method post will you know give us the opportunity to send the data okay um, and what I'm doing right now you know, I'm just saying this is test that post the string okay that's all and I'm giving the encoding as UTF-8 for the byte array for the encoding and then the content type I'm forcing this is also you know you, you don't need to put that um, okay you can keep it open if you want to uh, okay that's about it and as you can see uh, uh, these are all the things that I'm setting right now for the request you know what is the content type what is the length so it's a since it's a byte array type it's I'm saying it's a byte array type length and now I have to create a data stream right so I have to create a request uh, for that same request I'm creating a you know data stream and then I'm using data stream dot write to you know send each of the information that I have been trying to post right using that uh, data stream dot write and then very simple I'm just closing so this is all standard web request creation so you can see that you know I just created the web request and then I set uh, the type for it to be a byte array with the encoding and then I'm just writing uh, the data stream into it okay the same request I have to get a response back um, and that response is where you know we we are trying to read what is the status of the response you know we have the data stream uh, that we just created and then you know we are asking the same request uh, mm -hmm. to see what response it gives us back and that's about it you know what what we're doing is we're asking the reader to be closed uh, and the response object also to be closed and we are done right and the next part I said you know this is where uh, we can log the responses also uh, so you know what I'm taking is whatever is the response from the server I'm receiving right I'm just passing it to a you know a method and if you step into that method you can see each response will give you back a response code and response status so I just initialized a couple variables and I'm checking uh, you know the response string is not empty I'm using a string reader object uh, to read that XML and then I'll just uh, you know pass through that you know read okay as soon as I get the values for the response code I'm assigning it uh, right here so all it's doing is a simple while loop so it will go through that uh, API response and then it will take the first element in the XML um, as soon as it finds response code you know it, there can be more elements in there but all we want is the response code and response status I'm assigning it to it the variables that I declare that's how you know you can do it um, so these are now stored in the variable if you want to write you can write this to a log entity so now you have the values of the response code and response status you can have a log entity and then you can create uh, a log into that entity okay that's about it very straightforward guys uh, let me go back again I'll show you this is a simple CRM web request okay as long as you know your URL is uh, authenticated which is you'll create a web request object you'll set that to a method post and uh, it will have a byte array encoding UTF-8 and you'll use a data stream 
you'll write to the data stream uh, so that sends the data to the URL and then whatever the response that the URL is giving typically enterprise systems set up a response codes so that's what you have seen uh, in our code as well there will be a code and there will be a description usually you know success failure or you can have more you know, your codes coming back whatever the codes your enterprise systems say you can parse all those through so that's what I'm reading here in the web response and then what I'm doing is I'm storing that in the string variable so that I can later use it for parsing um, and if I want to I'll write it to a log entity that's about it very straightforward uh, I hope you you now understand how you can use web requests called external API's there are a couple things that I want to tell here when you have uh, an API that is authenticated Additionally, you have to pass the credentials, uh, force the credentials here. Okay, so good luck. I hope this will, uh, you know, help you out. You know, if you want to build around um, this model in your CRM, do let me know what you want to learn next. Thank you. Bye.